Good morning, guys. I say good morning because I am going to do an oil change on my F15 BMW X5. This is with the V8 twin turbo. Uh, if you're new to this channel, my name is Eddie. This is Edward M. Cars. Um, I do car reviews, which I haven't done lately because of the COVID stuff right now. But um, this is the V8, this is the N63 oil change. And I'm starting early because the temperature today is going to be close to 100 degrees. So I want to get this done before it's too hot. All right, guys, uh, let's get started. Just before I start, I need to move Lexi's car out the way. Um, just give me a little more room. So I'm gonna put the car here in the middle. I need to check her tires too. I know when I did her brake change on her car, the inside tread was getting low. So I'm, I'm keeping a close eye on that and I'm monitoring that to make sure that, you know, she doesn't get to a point where her, the cord is showing. Okay, she's short. I'm trying to get in here. Oh, I can't get my legs in here. Put the seat back. 17,000 miles, almost 18,000 miles. Now, Lexi bought this car brand new. All right, this is her first, like, brand new car she bought for herself. Right, I'm surprised how low the miles have been. You know, it was brand new, 2017, and she didn't drive, you know, had a short commute to work, and it's good. I mean, I mean, looking back on it, I mean, it would have been a perfect candidate for leasing, although at this point, her lease probably be up. I don't know what it is, but this car, I mean, as soon as the car starts, I instantly feel the ventilation coming through the, 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 the seats. It's very powerful. I wish, wish the X5 was like that. I can feel the X5, but it's just not as strong. Second time, I might look at some tires now. She... Yeah, I think it's just the way the alignment is in these cars. All right, so if you guys remember my dealership problem where I took it in for basically two issues. One was the real-time traffic. Uh, since I working, I need to make the appointment back with the dealership to sit down with the service guy and we'll figure this out. Uh, I've been working all week, so you know I don't have time to drop the car off. And like I said, you know I've been I work from like morning to like late evening. Um, but the next issue did go away on its own, which I'm really happy about. Uh, I haven't seen it come back. It's been about a week now, but it was the parking thing. When I turned the cameras on, the 360 camera, I would used to get an error. And now activating that 360 camera doesn't give me any errors. So, um, I did try to clear the code once. And when I tried to clear the code, it came right back on. So I figured, okay, I need to work on it. I need to figure out what's going on. And then the next day, um, I think two, two, two days or so, but it was like, I noticed it didn't pop up and then I waited the rest of the week and I activated the camera to see if I can get it recreated and sure enough, it's gone. So not sure what that was about, but I mean, it's working. I never had any cameras go out on the car. I'm just glad that at least I don't have anything that pops up. I just hate lights. I hate malfunction lights. Um, that's, that's just one of the things I, I just can't stand. You know, I, I like, the, I like a clean gauge cluster. So I ordered this oil change kit from Pelican Parts. Uh, lose too much oil within the 5,000 miles. So we started up on the ramps. So things you're gonna need. You're gonna need oil. All right, I decided to go with Liquid Molly. 
This is their uh, Life Slow High Tech. Um, not sure if I said that correctly. You'll need at least nine and a half, whatever oil you use, you'll need at least nine and a half quarts of oil. Um, I think the engine takes eight and a half, but there's a sump in here that takes um, another quarts, what I've been reading about. So um, I usually just have a lease. I just go ahead and buy um, the two five liter jugs and you know add accordingly. You have an oil filter, obviously. You're gonna need some type of wrench to get this off the, the you know the housing. Um, I'm trying this out. I last time I did this, I didn't have this piece, and it was just a pain to get an actual oil filter wrench around the housing and screw it. Um, at minimum, you'll need to replace the washer. I mean, these washers are like like ten cents or something like that, uh, or twenty five cents. But I got the washer, and I decided while I'm at it, just go ahead and replace the plug. I probably don't need it. Could be overkill, but I just go ahead and replace the plug. It's only like three dollars. Uh, tools you will need, obviously. Um, this is a hex key. Um, it's eight millimeter, I believe. On you know, I just use it on a three quarter inch drive. And for this piece, I'm gonna need a half inch drive for using this to get the old filter wrench off. Okay, so engines are already been warmed up. Um, that's obviously best if you've never done the oil change before. It's better to have the engine warm, operated temperature, and then let it drain because then it's typically it drain a little bit easier than when it's, it's cold oil and it's thicker. So let's get started. I just, I usually just open this up to let that breathe a little bit. I feel like it helps personally let the oil drain. Think of it like a bottle of water. You let have some vent. And I'm gonna protect the floor with something because I don't want to spill oil on the ground. So I couldn't find anything really like um, a tarp or something. So I'm gonna use this. This is just a drape I use where I work. Ignore the weird. Uh, you know the shape of it, but as long as you have something to protect, it's okay. All right, so what exactly are you going to be doing? So I'll show you what you'll be doing underneath. I have my cover. And two things you're going to take off. First, to drain the oil. If you look under here, if you start from the front and work our way back. Underneath, you're going to see a couple circles. Here and here. First thing right here, this is your oil drain plug. You'll be taking that out, draining the oil. Next thing, oil filters right there. Unscrewing that, letting the oil drain. All right, simple as that. And then we'll let it drain for a little bit and ref refill it. I don't like uh, when the oil decides to come down on me. Okay. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna take these out. I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm gonna put my I'm gonna try and put this pan closer because last time I got splashed all over me. So we'll see if I could just contain it with this. Put the camera down.
I tried to do something, but of course when I set it down, this reservoir filled up faster than what I could attain. And I spilled all the oil here on the garage. Don't laugh, this was the shortest extension I could find. That fits up there perfectly. Much easier than I had to do last time. This is a mess. This is a mess. Well, let's continue. No use crying over spilt oil. Okay, so you pull this out. That could be discarded. This is gonna be a mess. This, I'm sorry, guys. I had to mount the camera to my head, and it's always recommended to replace this seal up here. Take some fresh oil. You're gonna coat the new seal. Just make sure you hit this groove up here, right there. Just wrap it right in there. Make sure you don't get confused with the threads. Put it right here. And that should work. Now, take your filter and you click it right in here where it says cap sided. Obviously, this is where the side of the cap is going to be. Pop. See that? I heard an audible pop there. Now I'm good to go. Now I can screw it back into the car. Make sure it's all clean. Make sure the threads are looks good. Threads look good. And I go ahead and screw it back in there. Now the seals, the seal that you put in there is gonna be a little bit tight, but I want to say I used to go to right there. I can't go anymore. It's fully locked in. And I'll give it one little minor click. If you want to use a torque wrench, you can. I, mean, I personally just go by feel. Uh, I, uh, no more than like 25 foot pounds is what you need. Alright guys, right there, and that's it. No need to crank this thing fully tight. I wrap my 
fingers around the edges to make sure that when I did thread this, I didn't cross thread it. It's not at an angle. It feels even all around. It's tight. So that I'm good to go right there. Like I said, this is optional. You don't have to replace this. I replaced my drain plug after every two oil changes. Just be a person. I've always done it with all my cars. Um, it's just, I have this peace of mind. I mean, these hex things don't really wear out. Uh, this goes back to some of the Japanese cars where you have the, um, the actual nut instead of the uh, Allen. Go. And a little minor click right there. Perfect. That's all you need. And that's how I go. I feel if you're unsure, it's your first time, I recommend just using a torque wrench. And I would say, I want to say 25 pound feet or put pounds of torque. I'm going to research it. I'm going to link it here in the bottom of the screen. Next is to go ahead and add oil. All right, so leave a quart in there. Uh, just put nine quarts in there, which should be probably 9.3. So whatever is left, and if there's anything left in there, I'm usually okay with that amount. BMW recommends Castrol. Well, Castrol's okay. I like the this one better. Before I back the car off the ramps, I like to crank it, let it idle for a couple minutes, look underneath it, double check for leaks. All right, start it up. First thing to look at, let's run back into here. And I'm all looking for leaks. Like I said, if, if you see it when a car's under pressure and say the oil filter wasn't on there correctly, that pressure, you'll see oil start squirting out from underneath the car. Um, the plug is slightly like that when things are, when things aren't um, tight. So, better to look now while the car's on the ramp that you can fix it before you get on the road and start driving away and realize that something wasn't correctly tightened up. All right, everything looked good to me. So now we can go ahead and finish the rest. So if you are resetting your car, what you want to do is turn the ignition on and you want to press and hold your button here, your trip reset button. Time, hold. I just released it. Okay, there we go. So now it'll ask me about brake pads. Reset possible. If I press it, you know, one more time, let's cycle through it. Front brake pads, engine oil. I will press right here. Press again, hold, reset, question mark, yes. Press and hold again. Reset in progress. And then it resets. Reset successful. And it says 9,000 miles max oil change. Brake fluid, no. Well, then you can go through. And that's how you do your services, guys. These are great cars. Obviously, maintaining them, you still got to do your maintenance on them. If you slack on the maintenance or you try to skip things that's when you have little minor issues that are going to arise look at it this way if you're not mechanically inclined and you have to rely on dealerships for all the services it's going to cost you some money but you know you save some money save some time actually because now i'll all change a dealership is probably about 150 dollars got the parts did it myself in my garage for about you know a little bit less than that now i'll Benefit was I'm here in my house. I could go through things. I could, you know, I'm not driving an hour to a dealership and an hour back. That's two hours right there. And you know, it's just it's just this time. Now, sometimes for peace of mind, I just take my car for service. Just easy for them to do it. But like I said, owning a BMW, I feel like for me, there's no dealer that's close by, and it's just almost a hassle to get an appointment and 
make it and drive down there and leave it, especially with the COVID stuff going on. Um, if I could just wait in the waiting, waiting room, you know, for whatever it was, it's sometimes worth the time just because I don't have time to, 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 you know, to go through this and, you know, clean up. Cause now I got a mess I got to clean up. So, you know, either way. This was uh, such a mess. All this oil. I got some oil dry right here, so I'm gonna put that down and clean up. So this is obviously not gonna be in the video, guys, but thank you for watching.